Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir. And you know, it's nice to be able to actually talk about a book I enjoyed. Now granted, I did like Deceased number 2. Um, I should have gotten 1 o'clock with that. Maybe uh, retroactively, because that was a book that, you know, I... I reread it again yesterday and realized how much I enjoyed it. And uh, but you know, a lot of the books I've been reading lately have just been such garbage. And yeah, I think I mentioned this. A lot of them have had um, <laughs> female main characters, and so I'm always worried about coming off as oh he hates women oh, and that's not the case at all. You know, I've mentioned many times my favorite character is She Hulk. You know, she's my favorite Marvel character. You know, she's tough. She's strong. Um, she's smart, uh, you know, well, not now, but she's, you know, beautiful, she's, you know, pretty much, you know, feminine power, and why they take that away from her at every opportunity lately, I don't understand, um, but a lot of the books I've been reading, uh, have been, they've been garbage, really, they've been, um, you know, virtue signaling, like, uh, you know, uh, man-eaters, and, which is just a mess, or just completely changing lore to be to to write a story about your message like uh, female furies. So it's nice to finally have a book here like Black Cat, and which is funny because my Black Cat literally just walked up to me. I thought he was going to walk in the uh, view here, but he changed his mind and went somewhere else. So uh, that would have been just you know too perfect. Anyway. I uh I do like this character. I do like Black Cat. I've always liked Black Cat more than Catwoman. Um, maybe I just like Platinum Blondes better than Brunettes. I don't know. Um, but anyway, um, and you know they they did that thing where uh, when in uh, Dan Slott in Superior Spider Man where he ended up getting her busted and you know her identity was then you know known to the police and all that and then she became a a, a gangster crime lord, didn't she? Or is that Catwoman? I dropped off Dan Slott's book when uh, um, when Peter came back, and I just when he went to Japan. So I'm not quite sure what exactly happened to her character after that. I know Catwoman became the head of a gang, and I thought that Catwoman was doing that. Black Cat was doing that too. Um, maybe I'm just conflating the two. But anyway, here we have a book, and I'm going to say it up front: this book is fun. You know, this book is everything like a good heist book should be. Uh, this book is enjoyable, um, but you know, I'll save that for the end. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to pop into this um, because there's actually two stories in this, and I'll get to that in a minute. You know, it opens up at the is that Frick uh, collection, and she talks about consider the cat. The cat goes wherever she wishes. Wishes her charm, her poise is her passport. Um, who can deny her? The cat turns all eyes to her. Her glamour, her magnetism draws all attention. It feels like uh, some of these commas are unneeded in here. Um, who can ignore her? The cat accepts what gift she is offered. And what she is not offered, she takes. Who can refuse her? Eh, maybe a little heavy-handed, but, you know, it works. You know, because when Black Cat is at her... Not quite smugness, but confident, you know. Um, she works best with that. Um, pretty words, sure. But this cat likes pretty things. I'm Felicia Hardy. Um, of course, you know. Um, so she's um, introduced as a black cat. And, you know, she's at this collection, at this basically gallery, uh, gallery um, and security, you know, uh, cites her. Felicia Hardy, the black cat. And, uh, high alert, all points, eyes on female, mid-twenties, white dress, uh, white hair, black dress, add stunner, <sighs> stunner. So the security guards, you know, we got the one guy who's taking this very seriously. You know, you see all the tattoos on his arms, he's got sleeves going on, while his, uh, other security guy is just eating hors d'oeuvres and, uh, look, Sonny, relax. You think she's going to rob the place in a little black dress? We don't get paid to relax. You're too intense, man. Have an hors d'oeuvre. So he's trying to explain um, about uh, um, why this should be an issue. Um, and this is Sonny Ocampo. We'll come to him. You know, we see him down here. Looks like he also has a criminal history. Um, how'd you get those? You fight a caterer? 
The catering staff's a mess. A bunch of them are down with E. coli. They had to get some last-minute replacements. And, of course, Sonny, you know, has cured. He's not having this. And I'm hearing about this now? Are you kidding me? Sonny, don't worry about it. It's cool. We got them from the temp agency. Damn it, Kevin, I have to vet these people. I'm head of security on this gig. You know, as someone that deals with IT security, this type of thing is annoying as hell. Um, so, yeah, you can see where this is going. But, you know, he, uh, Sonny does seem to have a criminal history himself. Which is not uncommon that people who, you know, have some type of uh, criminal background, whatever, you know, as they grow up, they end up getting hired into security gigs. Because obviously, who knows, um, who knows how to beat <laughs> the criminal element better than someone that's been in it. That's why you see a bunch of former hackers become IT security consultants. You know, they still get to play in the waters, but it's legal and they get paid for it, so... Um, so yeah, that, that, that appeals to my personal taste. So we get more of, uh, ca uh, Black Cat here, and, um, notice these two back here in the background. Very easy to miss here. Um, Odessa, darling, imagine seeing you here. So we have Odessa Drake. She is the head of the New York, uh, Thieves Guild. And since Felicia you know, uh, screwed up a job for her, which might have happened in The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I'm not familiar with what they're talking about, what job. Um, but, you know, the issue covers it where you don't need to know all the details. You get what you need. Um, she screwed something up. She owes Odessa back uh, for whatever she did. You know, think like uh, Han Solo and Jabba the Hunt. Um, you know, he dumped his spices, you know, when he saw the Empire. But you don't really know all the details. You know the basics. You know, it works fine with this. And, uh, so there's a little bit of a pissing contest between the two of them. Um, darling, let me stop you there. You could train a dog to heal Odessa, but a cat, and Black Cat extends her claws out. A cat doesn't listen to anyone. You know, a cat becomes more tractable when starved, Felicia. I would make that olive last. That will be the last profit of our trade that you will enjoy until we are reconciled. And her thought uh, caption, that went well. And uh, <laughs> the security guy, not Sonny, but the other one, she has claws. And Sonny decides, that's it. I'm escorting her out. And so we find that she's admiring a painting while the two other dudes here are checking out something else. And so Sonny escorts her out and... Uh, they have a little bit of their banter. I'd take it all home with me if I could. I'll bet. I know your rep. Respect. And so back in the security office, you know, he sh um, the one guy that's underestimating everything, checks everything, then realizes one of the paintings is missing. So we get the introduction um, between Black Cat and Sonny Ocampo. Um, and, you know, she tells him, right, that's the thing about the cat. You see... She never leaves empty-handed. So she jumps in her getaway car, and that's when Sonny gets a call that one of the paintings was stolen. And she blows him a kiss, and <laughs> so Sonny has to commandeer uh, this moped. Now, the two temp caterers we see here um, were actually working for Felicia, you know, obviously. But we saw them, not so much in the background, but just behind uh, Felicia in, uh, uh, when she was talking to Odessa. And... Uh, <laughs> even Boris is like child's play, almost insulting. Now, here's the funny thing. I didn't recognize these guys at first. Uh, Boris Corpse and Bruno Granger. These two go back to the Black Cat's first appearance way back in Amazing Spider-Man. I think it was still in like the one, it, like the 180 or so. so way back when. Um, and I don't know if they've really appeared much if they have appeared lately with um, uh, the current, you know, Amazing Spider-Man run, um, um, I missed it. But yeah, you get a nice little description, doesn't spend a lot of time on them, you know, bringing you up to speed. You know, Dr. Boris Corpse, self-taught genius, self-titled doctor. Can crack almost any safe, can hack almost any system, and the ones he can't, he blows up. His Richard III almost caused a prison riot. Um, then we get Bruno Granger, ex-Army helicopter pilot, ex-Bagram uh, uh, heavyweight champ, 
drives Zane with wheels, flies Zane with blades, and would raise the hand would raise hands to the Hulk if I asked him to. Had a bit of a problem with authority until he came to work for me. And yeah, that's what happened. In her first appearance, she took them on and then hired them to be her crew. So, you know, I, I kind of got some uh, vibes of um, the Harley Quinn series. Um, the most recent one when it first started, you know, uh, when she had her crew and everything. But, you know, it makes sense, you know, as a cat burglar, she has a crew. And it's nice to see... Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd love it when when they go into the past and take these characters and pull them back and, you know, make them relevant again. And you, you have two very interesting characters, especially Bruno. It's really enjoyable. So as they're making their getaway, um, not only do they have Sonny Ocampo coming after them, but they have the New York Thieves Guild. So we get this great fight on top of a car, you know, um, as uh, Black Cat is changing into her outfit you know, Boris yells, how are they on us already? And Black Cat says, hey, eyes, eyes front, perv. Which is funny to hear uh, said from her, since, you know, she tends to wear her, um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, her her top so low cut. And so uh, I got a plan, Bruno. We keep what we stole. We carve them up. And we don't take orders from anyone. So she's standing on a car um, that's racing away with the Thieves Guild ninjas coming after her. And, you know, she has the agility of a cat. She could pull this off. So, yeah, we get some great little fight scenes as they're hitting 60 down the road. And, uh, uh, you know, Boris, what do you got? Uh, mustard gas or white phosphorus? Choices, choices. So, uh, uh, while she's getting attacked, the one of the uh, attackers, one of the guildmen, gets tased by Sonny. Give me that painting. Who are you? What? Ocampo. Sonny Ocampo from the party. It's nice. This is one of those things that I always think about when you see characters, you know, you know, especially flying. You know, you see Superman and Wonder Woman flying through the air. They must have a lot of trouble hearing one another because of the wind. So, yeah, with the car and the engine noises, they're having trouble hearing each other. Right, the security gig. Are you totally obsessed with me now? And, uh, what? No. It would never work. I'm no good for you, baby. You see, I'm bad luck. And yeah, they did bring this back that she does have her black uh, bad luck powers. So she gets away from Sonny because he hits a rock and crashes. And they uh, decide to uh, split up and meet back up at their hideout. And so, yeah, you got uh, Odessa who is, you know, being set up to plot her revenge or whatever, how she's going to get even to settle the score that uh, Felicia owes her. So back at the uh, base, you know, boys to us. So they talk a little bit here, you know, um, music, drink, celebration. And uh, <laughs> no, not a chance. Forget it. It's his turn. You know, No, anything but that. Yes, music for truly advanced heads. Metal machine music. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a lot of lighthearted stuff in here. And you get to see their personalities, especially Boris Corpse. He is, he's a psycho and he's great. He is really fun. I love every panel he's in. So, um, as she's uh, um, talking about the picture and the painting they stole, once a mis mysterious buyer gets in touch, oh, but the buyer is here, my dear. So they scramble and uh, get a gun, get a grenade. We find out that at the end of this part of the story, this part of the issue, it's actually the guy who trained her father, the Black Fox. And he says, so tell me, do you think the three of you have the nerve and the new to, for the next step, my darlings? And we see all his identities. And the next step is uh, the next section, a um, couple little stories. It's a cute thing, kind of a silent one with the black cat. And then there's a story with... Um, that focuses on the black fox, how he scams Dracula. That's how awesome this guy is. And, of course, it has uh, Bloodstone in it. Um, not Elsa Bloodstone, but her father. And it has um, uh, the black hat's dad. And that's a, it's a good story, too. Um, this book is good. It's paced very well. Um, it's humor. It's, it, it is a good um uh, what's the word we'll look over? Why am I just blanking a heist? It's a good heist book. 
Um, you know, there's the comedian Dane Cook, whom I absolutely loathe. I, I can't stand the guy. But he does have one thing he says that is absolutely true. Every guy, deep down inside, wants to be part of a heist. And there's just something in it that appeals to our male nature. You know, the against authority, com- camaraderie with the close uh, associates, getting the job done, you know, and financing yourself along the way. But anyway, um, and this is a fun book. And it's paced very well. We get um, introductions to the characters well. Each one has a voice. Each one is distinct. And we get all the various groundwork laid out. You know, we got Odessa, we got Sunny. We know these people are going to be coming back. We get a good reintroduction to her crew. Um, and we see how they work together. And, of course, you know, Black Cat has, you know, and that's a problem with luck powers. They can be very nebulous or they can be very OP as the plot demands. And, yeah, this this book is fun. I really enjoyed it. Um you know, we got a Campbell cover, and, you know, you can't really have stuff like that anymore in comics. I'm surprised I didn't hear more complaints about it, but sex sells. It's good. It's There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and uh, besides, you know, Black Cat has always been the type to use that to her advantage as, you know, a distraction. But anyway, long story short, 1 o'clock. Actually, i got to use this hand so I can turn it right, but 1 o'clock. I like this book. Yeah, I picked it up on a whim. I was kind of worried where they were going with it. Um, and also, they jump right into it. You know, there's not that full black page where they put all the credits of everyone and then, you know, say, you know, Felicia Hardy, a.k.a. the Black Cat, a.k.a. Spider-Man's former lover. You know, they don't do that kind of stuff, which is really annoying because it just takes a page from the story that could be used better elsewhere. and. Um, so yeah, this is this is an enjoyable book, and I highly recommend it. I'm I'm going to add this to my poll list because I uh, I can't I can't say enough about it. It was fun, and like I said, you know, I'm reading these characters. I want to know more about Sonny. He's a former criminal. You know, he and Felicia don't know one another, but what's his story? And um, is his you know is she got away from him, you know, with his painting. Um, so now he has a reason. Is he going to go after her? I don't know, but it's going to be fun to find out. So, yeah, 12 o'clock, full 12. So, anyway, uh, new comics tomorrow. I didn't even get through all the ones this week because, as you can hear, I'm still losing my voice. Well, I'm technically getting my voice back here. So, anyway, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.